Hello and welcome, my name is Colin, call sign MM0OPX. In this video, I want to share with you 10 of my top 10 items for building antennas. Now, if you've been following the channel, my channel for any length of time, you know that I like to build um, field day style antennas, um, and these are usually uh, wire antennas. And starting with that, number one, wire antennas. What type of wire do you need to use? Well, there's four types that I like to use, um, depending on the situation. First one is a 0.75 millimeter wire. It's a stranded copper wire, PVC coated. Um, I use this from, uh, you know, if I'm needing, really, if I'm needing kind of higher power stuff. So if I want to run my ACOM amplifier, I have no problems in running this uh, PVC coated wire. It will handle that absolutely no problem at all. If you go down a size, you have the Sota Beams uh, lightweight antenna wire. I think that's 0.22 um, millimeter diameter. It's much, much thinner, but again, it's uh, like PVC coated. Um, it'll handle up to around about 100 watts. So it's ideal if you're QRP or you just need a, a, a lightweight antenna wire you want to take into the field. So it is one that I do like, but you've got to watch with it. You can't put it under, under too much uh, uh, tension or it, or it will, it will stretch. Um, you do have uh, enameled copper wire. Um, now, normally when people see this, it's because they're building their NFED half-wave transformer, 9 to 1, 1 to 1, whatever. But you can also use this wire for actually, you know, it was previously sold as, I more commonly known as when I first started as an amateur, as hard-drawn copper wire. Um, and because it's enamel coated, it's, it, it puts up to, to the weather, no problem at all. So don't just be thinking about using it for your transformers, which is great, but also maybe consider using it for, for antenna wire because it, it, it doesn't stretch. And last but not least, stainless steel wire. You'll hear a lot of people poo-poo this wire, saying it's no good for anything, but I'll tell you the absolute opposite. Um, in the right circumstances, it's absolutely great. The downside with it is you cannot um, solder it, or you, sorry, you can't solder it easily. There is methods, but there's, there's ways around about that. But for certain types of antennas that I've been building, namely Adjust the Wave or my Moxons, this stainless steel wire is absolutely perfect. Number two. When you're building an antenna, you're going to need some sort of enclosure, generally speaking. And two very common ones that I use, now these both come from a company called Direct Trade Supplies. They're both 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter by 50 meter, so um, four by four by two inch for our American cousins. Um, one of them is a, a little bit more lightweight. It's a G-Wiz box. You can buy these G-Wiz um, enclosures in a number of different sizes to suit your needs. But you also have this, um, I think it's called an Eterna box, polypropylene box. And they've got uh, twist screws, which are really, really good. So um, like recently when I've been building my LC matches, I can just take the lid on and off, do a little bit of adjustment, put it back on. And you just need a, a plain screwdriver. But Direct Trade Supplies I've found to be very, very reasonable in price. Uh, good shipping um, and you know no problems at all and I will put all the links um, to all these products down in the description so if you want to pick up any of these items you know I, I thoroughly recommend it. Number three um, RF connectors don't use rubbish connectors folks it, it, it just isn't worth it you can get decent connectors for not too much money um, for SO239s I like to use a it's called a solder bucket um, tab because it's got a little solder tab and it's got a little hole in it um, you drill a 16 mil hole you put it through your enclosure and you put the nut on the other side I buy these from Matt M0MAT on eBay he has a great eBay shop all his connectors are gold plated terminals PTFE dielectric so with insulation material in the middle you really can't go wrong with these um, BNC's Matt also sells very high quality BNC's but um, I've been using Amphenol BNCs. I've been getting them from DigiKey. Again, gold-plated contacts. Um, really, really good connectors. Number four, you're going to need some hardware inside your enclosure. Um, and I like to use stainless steel hardware because you don't get oxidization, corrosion in it, and that will affect your antenna. Generally speaking, I use 304 grade. Um, 304 grade is like a general grade stainless steel, 316 is classed as marine grade, so if you're in a marine atmosphere, go with the 316, but otherwise just stick with the 304. It's extra money that you don't need to spend. I do work beside the sea from time to time and no problem at all. So M6 um, stainless steel, 304, generally speaking, that's what I use. Cap screws, bolts, um, different types of washers, penny washers, um, butterfly nuts. 
all great stuff. I get mine from the Nut and Bolt shop, which you don't need to buy too many and you start to get a, a good discount, but there's loads of suppliers out there uh, of that type of thing. Number five, a soldering iron. Now, a lot of people use, or nearly everyone I see uses electric soldering irons. I use a butane iron. I use a Portisol um, Super Pro 125. It's a wonderful piece of kit. I've been using these for the last 10 years. Now, I'm not soldering electronics. You get so much heat in this thing, it's unbelievable. I believe it heats up to about 580 degrees. These are sold under a lot of names, but Portisol, I believe, is the original. But even the likes of Snap-on, they sell them. But buy the, buy the Portisol one, it'll cost you about £50 for the kit. You get different um, sizes of um, tips for the end. You can take the tip off altogether. You can use the bl you can use the flame. Sometimes I just use the flame for soldering, and because it's cordless, you can take it out into the field. Don't have to worry about cables. And when you need to fill it up, just go down to your local store, news agents, and get some butane gas, um, and that allows you to fill it up. Solder wise, I've been using Weller solder. I'm still using uh, flux cord flux cord uh, leaded solder 6040. I've just been getting that from Amazon. Um, and, and more than good enough uh, for my needs. Number six, so you've made your antenna inside your enclosure and you're maybe wanting to maybe make it a little bit more watertight. Certainly I like to do that, I like to do belt and braces. So heat lined or adhesive lined uh, heat shrink, absolutely fantastic stuff. I've got it in various sizes, 10, 12, 16, 20 millimeters. I put it around um, coax connectors, I put it around wires, just, and you can use it structurally as well, I found, as long as you're putting not too much strain on it. So you could put a wire, fold the wire back through and use a bit of heat shrink instead of, of using a wire. Fantastic stuff. And when the glue melts, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll give a waterproof seal in the right application. Um, also, uh, liquid electrical tape. I've been using this for a long, long time. Um, you basically just take the top off, you just slather a little bit of this stuff and it just sucks into the connections and gives a completely waterproof connection and goes off really, really fast. So I thoroughly recommend uh, both of those items. Now you've got your antenna, you then need to put it up on something and I can't leave out Spider Beam's 12 meter uh, HD pole. It really is the gold standard when it comes to uh, antenna supports. Um, I don't say that lightly because I waited a long time before buying one and I now own two, actually I own three, I own the, te the 10 meter one, I've got two 12s and a 10. So I would urge you to just go out and buy one because you will use it. Um, it's got really nice thick walls. The beauty with this is because it's 12 meters or 12 and a bit, you can put a full quarter wave for uh, 40 meters up there and you can have elevated radials at the same point. And if you take a few sections out of this, you can actually put um, small beams on it. And I've actually put my 20 meter moxon on this. So um, about two kilos, yeah, near, near enough, up this on a, on a, on a 12 meter spider beam pole at six, seven meters. So, you know, it's a lot of money, but I would say just buy one if you can afford one. And also if you break a section, you can go back to spider beam and they'll actually replace it. You can, or you can, you can buy a spare section. No problem at all. You're going to get that back up. Number eight, going along with the spider beam, you need some way of guying it. I am a big fan of Mastrant cables. Now, I predominantly use Mastrant P. You get two grades, P and M. M is like a, you get a stronger diam, stronger breaking strain for a smaller diameter. But for what we are talking about, it doesn't really matter. The Mastrant P is is cheaper. I use the four millimeter stuff. Um, I originally was wanting three, but they didn't have any three. So they says, can we send you four instead for the same price? I said, sure. And I've been using this for years. Um, really, really strong, nice to work with. Doesn't kink a lot, uh, just great support rope. Going along with that, I like to use something called uh, uh, clam cleats. Um, and basically I use these to tension up the guy wires. Um, I think they're designed for tents and things like that. Very, very strong. I've never had one break, even under storms and what what have you. But I like to put these on the, on the spider beam pole and because I can basically adjust each one and I can get it nice and uh, nice and straight. So clamp cleats are another great shout. Now, getting near the end here, number nine, um, and that's an LCR meter. And my LCR meter is the Peak Atlas LCR 45. What a wonderful bit of kit this is. If you're going to be building antennas, then this really is a, a, a lovely bit of kit to have. 
or even if you're into your electronics, you want to measure the capacitance or the inductance of, a, of, a, of an item that you, it's not stated on it or it's rubbed off, you can do it easily with this. My use case is actually building matching units, so L matches in particular, making a little inductor, so a little coil of wire. I use like an online calculator and then I just confirm it with the LCR meter. Absolutely amazing. And the same with the, uh, the, the capacitor function. I've been using coax as a, a capacitor. So basically having an open, open length of coax connecting uh, one end with the, uh, with the probes. And then basically you can just trim that, trim that, and you can see where your capacitance is. So the LCR, uh, sorry, the Peak Atlas retails around about £90. Can get cheaper models out there. But again, if, if you buy one of these, you'll get the backup and support you need uh, worldwide for that. Last but not least, number 10. And this is the antenna analyzer. Now, my current uh, antenna analyzer of choice at the minute is the Rig Expert AA55 Zoom. And the reason I've got this model is I couldn't afford the next model up, which was like the 200 or the 600 or, or the 1000. Absolutely amazing. Um, I can't say enough about the Rig X, but I've got an older AA200, which was fantastic. But this uh, AA55 Zoom is just out of this world. The function it's, it can do, you know, okay, you can just do your SWR sweep. But you can also do a sweep for resonance. So that means zero reactance. Uh, you can look at your complex parameters. You've also got a number of tools in there. You can actually cut lengths of coax to suit. So if you're say you're making phased verticals, you can you can trim your coax absolutely to to, to where you want them. And um, it's just such a, a versatile item. You can take it out in the field, uh, use it at home. If you buy a Rig Expert, you won't regret it. Also, it's Bluetooth, so I can hook up my phone. I can control it from there. I can um, save sweeps, so on and so on. So. The Rig Expert for me is is, is where it's at. Um, there are op other options out there, cheaper options. You know, you've got the MFJ, which I don't think are that cheap, actually. Of course, you've got the Nano VNA, which I have. And your Nano VNA is actually going to do all of this. And your Nano, v can, v Nano VNA can actually do more. And it's considerably cheaper. But the downside of that, there's a much steeper learning curve with the Nano VNA. It's much more fiddly. It's got that tiny screen. Do you really want to take it out into the field to do things? Not for me. I like using the Nano VNA at home in a nice, comfortable environment. So I would certainly recommend the Rig Expert. So there we are. That's just 10 of my favourite items. I know some of them are groups, but just some of the items that I use. Now, my antenna designs are fairly modular. So depending on what antenna I'm making, I, you can use the same components across the board, which in turn saves me money. Once again, I'll put all the links to these items down in the description. If you're in another country, perhaps you can source them from another supplier locally. Okay, there we go. 73, all the best. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.